Martin, how are you feeling? Not bad, but not particularly great either. I'm so sorry about what my mom did. I know it's not something that'll go away with an apology, and I doubt you'll ever forgive her. But I promise you, she didn't do it on purpose. So, about the compensation, would you mind maybe rethink... She didn't do it on purpose, so don't take her to court for compensation. That's what you're about to ask, isn't it? I mean, it's not exactly like that, but... But she doesn't have insurance. Look, I'm just gonna be straight with you. She's simply not sure if she can come up with the amount of money you're asking for. It's a lot, Martin. I'm fully aware of how much it is. But your mom ran over me and now I'm in a wheelchair! Do you understand that? It's like, all you can think about is the consequences on your end. No amount of money could ever make up for this. The nerves in my spine and legs are so damaged that they said it'll be a miracle if I ever walk again. Which means, I'm not going to be able to continue in the same line of work. My life's been flipped upside down. And you still have the nerve to ask me to not press your mom for money? I'm sorry, Martin. I'm so, so sorry. But my mom didn't do it on purpose, I swear. Duh! If she did, she'd be in prison. Don't get me wrong. I'd be way more satisfied seeing her behind bars. But even if it wasn't on purpose, the result is the same. Please don't say things like that. Believe me, Selena. This is me holding back. Let's face it. Your mom always hated me. What? I don't know anything about that. Oh, you don't? So did you forget about all the times she poked fun of me for being ugly? Or how she said she hates my personality? Or her endless making fun of me for supposedly being infertile? You have no idea how long I've been holding my tongue around that woman. And the only reason I did was for you. But there are some things that can't be overlooked. I'm drawing a line here. She won't get away with this. But she's super broken up about it too, Martin. She feels terrible and she's really sorry. If she was that sorry, she could have at least come to see me in the hospital. Not only that, she hasn't even apologized yet. How sorry can she be? It's pretty obvious she has no intention of apologizing. She probably doesn't even care. Martin, she probably just finds it difficult to talk to you. She's never been one to discuss her emotions and she always becomes so withdrawn when she's stressed out. I bet she just doesn't know the right way to apologize. She wants to, I just know it. She must be so ridden with guilt that she can't even bring herself to face you. Whether it's difficult to say it or not, or whether she can't bring herself to face me or not, I can't walk anymore because of her. If she can't do the right thing now, then she never will. Surely the least she could do is give me an apology. Isn't that what any normal person would do in the situation? You're right. Look, I can't deny anything you're seeing, Martin. It's all true. But my mom is so depressed. I've never seen her like this. I think she knows she did something unforgivable and it's eating her up. Even so. But please, listen to me. She spoke to me earlier today. She said she wants to be the one who picks you up when you get discharged from the hospital. If you give her the chance and let her meet you, she'll apologize. I just know it. She's finally ready to see me? On the day of my discharge? She can stick a ride home where the sun doesn't shine. If you're not going to be the one there waiting for me when I get out, I'll take a taxi home. But Mom said she really wants to go. She practically insisted. Have you lost your mind? Why would I want to ride home from the person that ran me over? Please, please just give her one chance to apologize to you. I know it took her longer than it should have, but she's finally ready to meet you. At least hear her out. She's desperate to apologize. I just know it. Why else would she want to be the one to give you a ride home? Ugh. Fine. She can pick me up. But make no mistake. This doesn't mean I forgive her. It just means I'm letting her pick me up. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, Martin. That's totally fine. That's all I'm asking, really.
What the heck do you think you're playing at? Leaving me on the top of a mountain like that? If by any chance, did you abandon me there on purpose? Excuse me. Well, I never. You actually had a phone signal from up there. Modern technology never ceases to amaze me. This doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? Why did you leave me up here? You drive me out in the middle of nowhere to the top of some random ass mountain. Lift me out of the passenger seat and put me down in the grass and drive away? I can't walk, damn it! What are you thinking? It's December right now. Do you have any idea how cold it was up there? It was snowing for crying out loud. I don't see what the problem is if you're well enough to be messaging me. Just because by some miracle I was able to get a signal doesn't mean that what you did was okay. If I had no signal, there was a chance I might have died. How could you lead me to a place like that? Do you have any idea how much danger I was in? But you're alive, aren't you? So quit your whining already. You must have phoned a taxi, right? And I bet you're all warm and snug at home now, right? All's well that ends well. That's not the point. Enough of your rambling. I have some news for you. Selena won't be coming home again. Huh? I'm seeing to it that she divorces you and marries someone else. I see. And why exactly are you doing that? Is it because I'm a cripple? What use am I if I can't walk after all? Or perhaps it's because I'm infertile. Take your pick. Not only does her new man make more money than you, but he's also better looking. He could have been a model if he wasn't such a successful businessman. What's more, he already has a son with his ex-wife. So that proves he's capable of having kids. He ticks all the boxes. All of his male functions are in order, if you catch my drift. Unlike someone we know. So is this why Selena hasn't been answering my texts or calls? Is this what she wants? Or are you just forcing her? You can message her all you like, but you're wasting your time. I told her to switch her phone off and keep it off, so good luck. I also told her to relax, put her feet up, and leave all of the divorce proceedings to me. I see. Hmm, I wonder why your wife didn't show up to see you today. Today of all days. The day you, her husband, got out of the hospital after recovering from the accident that left you unable to walk. Can you think of anything a stay-at-home housewife could possibly have to do that would be more important than being reunited with you? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> she told me you had something you wanted to tell me? I assume she didn't come because she wanted to let us talk in private. Are you saying that's not the reason? Obviously not. <laughs> Are you stupid? Don't answer. That was rhetorical. Oh, Martin. I can't believe I'm finally going to have a grandchild. I can't tell you how relieved I am. You losing the use of your legs was the straw that broke the camel's back for that girl. I'm telling you, her mind's well and truly made up now. I can't use my legs anymore because of you! You! Ugh, don't say such horrible things. It was an accident, plain and simple. As far as the accident goes, I'm sorry. It's actually impressive how casually you're able to say things you don't mean at all. Accident or not, it's your fault this happened. If not for you, I wouldn't be in this wheelchair, and I'd still be able to walk. Good grief, do you ever stop whining? Put a lid on it, no legs. It was bad enough when you were just infertile, but now you're crippled too? You're literally useless. Oh well, what do I care? Selena's marrying a hunk with the real deal in between his legs and the history to prove it. The worries you've caused us are a thing of the past now. Have you ever heard of female infertility? I'll have you know, there's nothing wrong with my little guys. They're great swimmers. Huh? I can't take any more of your crap. It's time you knew the truth. It's not me who's infertile. 
Selena is the one incapable of having kids. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of coping mechanism? Whatever. If it makes your tragic little existence slightly more bearable, then who am I to stop you? A coping mechanism? I'm just relaying the results of a fertility check, you delusional toad. My boys are as potent as they come. I'd have been happy with just a normal result. But it turns out, I actually have a higher than average sperm count. I practically got my own little tadpole army. You can look at the medical certificate if you don't believe me. I've been getting tested fairly regularly since way back. Oh my god. Is this true? My Selena is infertile? No, it can't be. It is. But why? Why did you let me say those things all this time? Why didn't you set me straight if you knew all along? Isn't it obvious? I had to protect Selena from you. Because I know how horrible you'd be to her if you knew she couldn't have kids. I had no problem with you believing I was infertile while she underwent therapy. That was the price to pay for keeping her safe from you, and so be it. I loved her more than anything, and there's nothing I wouldn't have done to protect her. Honestly, it was a no-brainer. Far from being bothered by a toxic loser like you thinking poorly of me, I wore it as a badge of honor. I've had it now, though. Here's another one for you, too. I've known she'd cheat on me for a long time now. Huh? I hired a private investigator. Her behavior got so suspicious that the signs were too strong to ignore. Funnily enough, it was her lover who gave the game away in the end, though. What? You've known for a while now. But I still haven't even met her new fiancé. Surely I'd know about this. Hmm. Interesting. Wait. Does this mean that she has a third guy on the go? She's been a busy girl, if so. You know what, though? What difference does it make? I don't even want to know. God, she's disgusting. You both make me sick. Wait, please, none of this makes any sense. I just don't understand. Nah, I've had enough for one lifetime. We can continue this in court, through our lawyers. Mark my words. You're gonna owe me so much in compensation, you'll wish it was you who got hit by the car. Prepare yourself. Wait, no, please! This doesn't add up with what Selena told me. She said I wouldn't have to pay you anything. What planet do you live on? Are there actually people as delusional as you on this planet? I can't walk because of you! You know what? I feel like an idiot now. But I did actually intend on reconsidering taking you to court based on the sincerity of your apology today. I wouldn't have guessed you'd abandon me on top of a mountain in the middle of winter in my wildest dreams! Rest assured, I'll be telling my lawyer all about today's shenanigans too. You made this ten times worse for yourself. I have to deal with your treacherous witch of a daughter now. So if you'll excuse me, goodbye. Martin, are you okay? I have nothing to say to you. You can go through my lawyer from now on. That's all. Please, I need your help. It's Mom. She's being so, so horrible to me. And she won't stop. Every single day, the verbal abuse never ends. You're a failure of a human being. What good are you with that barren wasteland of a womb? You'll never fulfill your duties as a woman. I'm ashamed to call you my daughter. Not my problem. You're getting everything you deserve for cheating on me. I'm infertile, so we'll never find out. God, you make me sick. And you did it in my car, of all places. I almost threw up watching the dash cam footage. You should probably try and avoid being covered in the smell of your lover's aftershave when you cheat on your next husband. You'll get away with it longer that way. I'm sorry. Look, my new fiancé broke up with me. Yeah, I heard about that. He actually had the decency to get rid of you when he found out you were married. Can't say you don't deserve it, though. 
Oh yeah. There was something else I wanted to ask you. I wonder if you can answer this. I probably won't get another chance to ask you. Why did you cover for your mom when she caused the accident? You covered for your mother after paralyzing me, despite her blatantly being in the wrong. Then you divorced me. What exactly was your endgame? Weren't you worried about your affair getting out? Or did you decide you liked Loverboy more than me when my legs stopped working? I knew there was no going back for us. I felt awful about it. You've always been so good to me. Being there for me when I was going through hard times. You were my rock, and I felt pathetic for what I'd done to you. But I thought that if I could remarry and hide my infertility to my new husband... Ah, uh, you intended on repeating the same mistakes then? You're beyond saving. Please, Martin, I know I did wrong. I said I'm sorry. You don't have to be so hard on me. I feel horrible enough as it is. Do you have any idea how much it pains me that I'll never have kids of my own? Can you even imagine what that feels like? Incredible! Only you could claim to be the victim in all this. Give it a rest already. I'm sick of hearing you speak. Would someone in anguish over not being able to have kids really say, I'm infertile, so he'll never find out, to the man they're cheating on their husband with? Ugh, what is it with you? Seriously, have you no compassion? I used up all my dad's inheritance money. I have no job, and to top it all off, I'm in tons of debt. Martin, we're both at rock bottom here. Maybe if you weren't taking out loans and getting wasted all the time, you'd still have some of your own money left. You've only yourself to blame. Please, I feel like I'm losing it here, Martin. I feel like I've always been a slave to my mom. I want out. You made your bed, now lie in it. We discussed cutting off ties with your mother when me and you got married all those years ago. Remember? Martin, please. Let's make another go of it, please. Can I have one more chance? Will you protect me one more time? I'll do anything, I mean it. And I'll never betray you again, I promise. Whether you could have kids or not, I've always said I'd be happy as long as I had you. I meant it. I really did. I loved you more than anything, Selena. Whether your mom abused me till she ran out of words to abuse me with, whether it meant struggling financially, I loved you too much to care about any of it. I know that. I've always been so grateful for you. Can't we go back to being like that, just me and you? I used to be your sugar dumpling, and you, my honey pie. Ugh! It's not happening in a million years, so just give it up. I've lost everything. My legs, my family. I was stabbed in the back by the person I love the most in the world. The one who needs protecting here is me, from you. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'll look after you from now on. I'll care for you at home. I'll help you with the rehab. Just let me in, please. I'd rather not. I don't need your apologies either. I mean it. I'll never betray you again. You're the only reason I have to carry on living, Martin. Let's give it one more shot. Me and you. We can be a team again, just like old times. Gross. You tossed your disabled husband aside to be with your lover. We're not having this conversation because he broke up with you. Not to mention your abusive health and safety hazards of a mother. What guy in the right mind would marry someone like you twice? I'd rather live alone in the wilderness on the mountain she abandoned me on. After finalizing divorce proceedings and receiving a tidy sum in compensation from the cheating backstabber and her wicked mother, I embarked on my new life by putting my house up for sale and I'm currently planning my next move while I wait for a buyer. I heard that Selena got institutionalized with severe mental illness over what happened with me. Like I said before, not my problem. I don't wish her ill, but anything that ever was between us is no more, and will never be again. I wasn't able to press charges on her ex-mother-in-law over paralyzing me in the accident, but I was so livid 
over the whole abandon on a snowy mountain in the middle of winter trick she pulled, that I filed a police report immediately. Apparently, she's going through several rounds of rigorous questioning at the police station. And according to my lawyer, things don't look great for her. I'm sure from her perspective, it was her way of twisting the knife in after paralyzing me and saying goodbye in the most malicious, black-hearted way possible. But as well as becoming notorious among the neighbors for having paralyzed someone through her careless driving, she gained quite the reputation as the crazy old hag who dumps people she doesn't like on the top of mountains. I wasn't able to use my legs at all at first, but after going to the rehab sessions like my life depended on it, I'm now able to take baby steps while grabbing onto railings. It's not much, but more than doctors ever hoped for. I may never be able to walk as well as I used to, but medical technology is advancing leaps and bounds these days. And I've always believed you should never give up hope. So nothing's gonna stop me from giving rehab my all. Thankfully, my company was very understanding and reinstated me from my usual position to office work. Now. I'm leading a stress-free life, doing things I enjoy. They say every cloud has a silver lining, and between the compensation to my savings, I'm in the fortunate position of having a lot of money stashed away, and I'm thinking of starting my own company. In any case, I can't tell you how great it feels to not be plagued with so many worries anymore. In a sense, this is the best revenge I could have ever hoped for. Hey, Renna. Is the Sunday of the week after next okay for the get-together with your parents? Hey, Ken. Thanks for working so hard lately. You're the best. Yeah, I think the week after next should be good. Mom and Dad should be at home then, so I don't see why not. Okay, great. Let's go for a week on Sunday then. Sounds good. Thanks for coming up with the day. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of nervous. I can't believe it's your first time meeting my parents, despite the fact that we're getting married. That's heavy. No kidding. It's just been one thing after the other with work and we never really got a chance, huh? This might just be the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Do you think I should wear a suit? No way, silly. Just wear your normal clothes. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I was wondering if I should invite Mel to be there for the introduction too. I guess I don't really mind. Mel knows I proposed to you, right? I wouldn't want to bother her on her day off work though, so only invite her if it's not a problem. Yeah, about that. Mel hasn't been herself lately. She seems a little... down? I was thinking it might do her some good to spend some time with everyone. It's been so long, I think it might be just what she needs. Oh? I didn't know about that. I see. Wonder if something happened. I've asked her a few times, but she keeps saying she's fine. Ever since we were kids, she's always been the type to hide how she's really feeling. Honestly, she never tells me anything. I don't know whether it's because we're twins, but even if she doesn't say a thing, I can tell when something's bothering her. Hmm, I see. I guess that is a little worrying. Hopefully being reunited with everyone will give her a break from her worries. Could be just what she needs. Listen, on the off chance that she says anything to you about how she's feeling, would you do me a favor and hear her out? I want her to have someone she can talk to. Huh? Me? Would she really unload her words onto me of all people? <laughs> she likes you, you know. She even praised you before. She said you always seem so relaxed and laid back. And that she feels like you're the sort of person she could rely on you if she needed to. <laughs> what? But I'm not like that at all. <laughs> Okay, deal. If she says anything to me, I'll hear her out. Thanks a bunch, honey. I'm counting on you. I'll tell my parents about the plan. Knowing them, they'll probably prepare an unnecessary large buffet. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I can always eat. <laughs> Ken. Oh, it's been a while. Hi, Mel. No kidding. How have you been? It's not like you to message me. Did something happen? I heard you and Renna are getting married, so naturally I wanted to congratulate you. Congratulations. Take good care of my big sister, okay? 
And don't forget to give me some attention every now and then, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to be going to your parents' place soon so I can meet them before the wedding. Did Rena tell you? Yep, she told me. The thing is, I really want to go. But I have plans on that day, and... Uh, I can't make it. Oh, I see. That's a shame. But let's go out for a meal somewhere, some other time, to make up for it. Just the three of us, okay? Sounds good. You're gonna be family when I marry your big sis, after all. And that means you're gonna be stuck with me. I hope you're prepared. <laughs> I want you to know that if you ever need anyone to talk to, I'm here. Whether I'll be of any use is a different matter altogether. <laughs> Hen, thank you. Listen, the thing is, I, um, I actually messaged you today because there was something I wanted to talk about. Oh, you did? What is it? Well, you see, I'm pregnant. Wow, congratulations! I didn't know you had a boyfriend. Wait a sec. No way. Is he refusing to acknowledge it as his? No, the baby is yours. What? The baby is mine? Yes. I'm pregnant with your child, Ken. No, 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 no. Wait a sec. Me and you aren't even together, Mel. I know that. But in that case, you must know it's not possible for you to be pregnant with my kid. That's where you're wrong. You don't know this, but I went on a date with you in my sister's place one time. Wait, what? No way. No way! Uh... There's just no way. It's 100% impossible. No. 200% impossible. The truth is, Ken, it was love at first sight. As soon as I saw you, I knew you were the one. I knew that we were meant to be together. On that day, Rena had a cold and she was feeling pretty under the weather. I could hear how ill she was on the phone, so I bought some vitamin drinks and headed over to her apartment. While I was there, she told me about how she was supposed to go on a date with you that evening. Then, after she fell asleep, something just came over me. I put on some of her clothes and headed out to meet you for the date, pretending to be her. Wow. Oh my god. There was a day where she canceled on you last minute, but then texted a little later saying it turned out she could go after all, right? Remember? Well, yeah, I remember, but... She said that was because you caught a cold and she was gonna stay home and look after you while you recovered. That was because I took her phone when she wasn't looking and sent a phony message. Speaking honestly, I was almost certain you'd know it was me. But I liked you so much, I thought, eh, what the hell, let's do it. What surprised me the most was that you didn't even seem suspicious. Come on, Mel, are you serious? None of this makes sense. The entire chat history is still there. Surely Rena would have seen it when she woke up and realized what was going on. Yes, which is why when the date was over, I apologized to her immediately. I think that's why she fell for it so completely. Of course, I didn't tell her about us sleeping together. I just played me going on the date instead of her as some kind of prank. Like a wanting to see how long I could trick you for kind of thing. Fun and games, you know? I see. The thing is, I've wanted kids for a long time, and that hasn't changed. But I'm not sure I can raise a child all on my own. To tell you the truth, I'm scared, Ken. Which is why I'm not going to ask you to acknowledge the baby. But I am going to need compensation in the form of child support payments, at least for a little while. Compensation? What the hell? I did think about raising it completely on my own, and honestly, I'd rather do it that way, but it's unrealistic. I'd be at work all the time, and I want to be there for the baby at least for the first year. I'm not going to ask you to pay child support for 20 years or anything. That would just be crazy. But at the very least, instead of that, and please understand I never wanted to ask you this, 
but can I ask you for a one-time payment of $40,000? Holy freaking Jesus balls. I'm sure I remember you and Renna talking about how you were saving up money in some kind of marriage fund, right? On top of that, you invest in stocks and shares, right? And didn't you say you dabble in crypto too? Surely you can put together a measly $40,000 for our baby. Like hell I can! What? Why not? Look, I know it could be argued that it was wrong of me to deceive you like that. But this is your own child we're talking about here. If you won't pay, I'll tell Retta and my parents that you got me pregnant. Do you really want that to happen? Retta would be heartbroken. She'd never recover. Of course I don't want that to happen. It's just that I honestly have no recollection of sleeping with you. I told you. I dressed up in Retta's clothes and pretended to be her when she canceled your date. You can either pay me $40,000 and this all disappears, or we can go public with everything and you marry me. Which will it be? I'm not unreasonable. If you marry me and take responsibility for your child, then we can forget about the money. It will, of course, involve you breaking up with Renna, though. Look, Mel, I'm sorry, but none of this is making any sense to me. Can you give me some time to think things over? Hmm? Fine. But make up your mind quickly. We don't have forever here. Every second you spend hesitating over what to do is a second our baby keeps growing. Ken! Have you made a decision yet? What's taking so long? It's been an entire week since you said you needed more time! Look, Mel. There's just no way I can go along with this. Ugh, are you still intent on playing dumb? It's time to stop being stubborn and face reality. You and Brenna are identical twins. Which means the average guy on the street might confuse you for each other at a glance. But I know you both. And I can tell the difference. Your mannerisms, your personalities, the way you speak, the vibe is just different. All the makeup, hairstyling, or clothes in the world wouldn't make me mistake you for my own fiance. I could drink 10 beers and still be able to tell you apart. And we didn't even drink that night. Ken, you're lying, aren't you? Even our parents get us mixed up sometimes. Do you really think you know us better than them? That's ridiculous, and you know it. Face reality already. Okay, so where's the proof it's my kid? If it's a DNA test you need, I'll be right there with you. Give me the cup and I'll shoot. Oh, wow, are you serious? Are you saying you don't believe me? I'm your fiance's sister. We'll be family soon. How could you be so horrible? I've had it with you. If that's your attitude, you leave me no choice. I'm telling Rena and my parents. You made me do this. This means war. I'll crush your wedding dream into little pieces. Give it your best shot, because there's no way what you're saying is true. I've examined it from a thousand different angles, and there's no scenario where what you're saying happened, happened. How can you be so sure? I can't believe you're going to marry my sister. I'm finally seeing your true colors. To think you're trying to escape responsibility for your own kid. What you're saying is literally impossible, because I can't have kids. Huh? I'm impotent, shooting blanks. My boys can't swim. Huh? Wait, what? What? Why didn't you tell me that from the start? <sighs> Are you serious? This has been nothing but a huge waste of time. I see. Yep, I knew it. You were lying. The reason I went quiet for so long was because I was racking my brains to try to find any kind of reason you'd lie about something like this. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Excuse me? Which part is funny? The idea of my sister marrying a good-for-nothing infertile loser like you. You're damaged goods. Do you have any idea how much my sister loves kids? You're doomed from the start. There's no way your marriage is going to last. You may as well not even bother and save yourself the hurt. <laughs> Renna said yes when I proposed knowing full well about my condition. 
which is why we planned on living happily together even if it meant we could never have kids. Hmm, well, that may be so. But what about our parents? Do you have any idea how many times they've told me how excited they are to be their grandkids? <laughs> You've got another thing coming if they think they'll allow this. <laughs> I've got it. I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. If you pay me a generous fee and hush money, I'll agree not to tell my parents about your <laughs> unfortunate condition. Believe me, you're done for if they find out. Think about it, everyone wins. You'd be a fool to say no. Everyone wins? How so? Because all this sounds like to me is that you're so desperate for money, you'll stop at nothing to get your grubby hands on it. Even if it means destroying your family's lives. <sighs> Whatever. You can think that if it makes you feel better. <laughs> I guess it's not exactly wrong. I'm really a sucker for a fat wad of cash. <laughs> but looking it up from your perspective, you want my mom and dad to like you, right? You must be really nervous about meeting them. You do want to be accepted, don't you? Well, yeah, but that's exactly why I don't want to lie to them. Funnily enough, I just arrived at your parents' place with Rena. Huh? But uh, the wedding introduction wasn't supposed to be for another week. True, but then you decided to pull this lunatic stunt of yours and the plan changed. I thought it'd be better if they heard it straight from the horse's mouth rather than you telling them in a malicious attempt to destroy their image of me. I decided it was best to start from a point of honesty and tell them the truth straight away. Wait, if you're at my parents' place, does that mean you told my family about me? It's not exactly that I told them. It's more that they're looking at my phone right now, watching this conversation play out in real time. What? They're doing... What? Oh my god. What have you done? Are you trying to destroy your fiancé's sister's reputation? What's wrong with you? The only one who destroyed your reputation is you, young lady. You're the shame of this family. You disgust me! Huh? Oh, uh, that wasn't me. It was your dad. So yeah, uh, that's basically where we are right now. I'm so sorry. Dad, please. I made a mistake, please. It was all just one big prank. A joke. I didn't mean it. Please, believe me. How about you come over and explain yourself to everyone in person? To quote your dad... GET YOUR ASS OVER HERE NOW! I think it's about time you took responsibility for what you've done. If you'd have just kept your mouth shut and paid me the money, my plan would have worked. Excuse me? Do you have zero self-awareness? In any case, you seriously need to get your head checked out. This isn't normal behavior. The one who hurt your sister is you, Mel. No, wrong. You hurt your entire family. It turns out the reason Mel was so desperate for money was because she'd become a regular at a local strip club and fallen in love with one of the gigolos, who periodically requested large sums of money from her. And she subsequently ended up in mountains of debt. To make matters worse, and I was gobsmacked when I found this out, but apparently this is the second time. The first time her mom and dad saved her butt and paid off her $80,000 of debt. But they made it absolutely clear that they never be doing it again and warned her vehemently against going down the same path. Sadly, even after being granted a second chance at life, she didn't learn from her mistakes. And this time was even stupid enough to borrow from a black market loan shark. Rena and her parents were furious at her for trying to extort money out of me. And they came down on her like a ton of bricks. I don't think I've ever seen a human being look so terrified. In the end, they cut her out of their lives completely. Apparently, her parents had sold their car, canceled their insurance policy, and begged various relatives to come up with the money to pay off the debts the first time around. Rena even donated the entirety of her savings account to get her wayward twin sister out of this catastrophic mess she'd gotten herself into. It's hardly surprising that none of them had the patience to put up with her shenanigans a second time around. Six months later, 
Mel showed up at her parents' house looking so worn out and beaten down by life that I can only describe her appearance as homeless. Of course, she lied about my role in everything, but it turns out she genuinely had been pregnant, and she came to beg for money to help with bringing up the baby. The baby daddy was none other than the male stripper she had fallen in love with. Needless to say, her dad sent her on her way before she even had time to say hello. By the way, the in-laws both apologized to me profusely for everything their daughter had put me through. They also had no issue with me not being able to have kids. In their words, as long as you two are happy together, you have our complete unwavering support. With that, it was full steam ahead for the wedding. Up until then, I never felt any kind of positive emotion towards my condition. But in this case, it was precisely because I was infertile that Mel's efforts to deceive me ended in failure. Thanks to my boy's inability to swim, me and my family were able to cut an unbelievably toxic individual out of our lives forever. She might have called me damaged goods, but now me and Rena are living out our married lives in tranquil peace and harmony, and I've never been happier. I intend to continue being a good, honest husband from here on out and live out my life in happiness with the woman I love. Anna, you've got a minute. Can you lend me some money again? Maybe like 300 bucks? Mom, I told you last month I'm not giving you any more money. Stop leeching off of me. Seriously. No more. I'm finished. You're not getting a dime. Oh, come on. I'm your mother. Don't be so cruel, please. No, you never pay me back. I'm not lending you another dime. Oh, Anna, please. I need money to pay the heating bill. Please help me, dear. I'm gonna freeze to death out here. What if I really die? I'm your mother. You have to help me. You really want that on your conscience? Stop trying to put this on me. This is your fault, not mine. If you want money, stop wasting money on stupid things. And you know what I'm going through right now? My husband is fighting cancer as we speak. I got enough on my plate as is. Stop bothering me with this nonsense! I know that. I wish I didn't have to ask, but I got bills to pay, and I'm in debt. Wait, what? Debt? You never told me that. I know. I knew you'd get bad, so I didn't tell you. Hold on. Wait. So you used up all the money Dad left you, and now you're in debt? You're joking me, right? Wow. Just wow. You're unbelievable. I don't even know what to say to you. Oh, stop being so dramatic. Please, Anna, you're the only one that can help me. I know you got your husband to take care of, but I'm family too. Please, you can't just abandon me. Please help me. I helped you enough already. I'm through with you. I'm not that wealthy, you know. This is your problem, not mine. Figure it out. And even if I had the money to give to you, I'd rather spend it on my husband, you got that? Fine, fine, fine. I'll figure something out about the debt. But I need the $300, please. This will be the last time, I promise. That's why you always say I don't trust you. You really expect me to believe you? How stupid do you think I am? But I'll freeze to death. You can't do this to me. Please, dear, I'm begging you. I'll get a job, I swear. Please. Uh, fine, but this is the last time. I mean it. If you try this again, I'm cutting all ties with you. You got that? You're a grown woman. Learn to take care of yourself. Oh, Anna, thank you. Thank you so much. I know, I'm gonna get a job soon. I promise. Thank you so much. You're the best. Sorry for the late reply. I was busy. Is your husband okay? You at the hospital? What happened? Hope everything is okay. Anna? Hello? Mom, he just passed away. He went peacefully. Oh, I see. Good. 
What? What did you say? What are you talking about? How can you say that? Um, the thing is, your wedding rings. I sold it off, but he's dead now, so it doesn't matter, right? Wait, what? Our wedding rings? You sold it? What are you talking about? When I came over the other day for the loan, I looked around the house for valuables, and uh, I found some nice rings and watches, so I sold it. You guys weren't using it anyway, so I thought you wouldn't mind. I used the money to pay off some of my debt. I didn't waste it on stupid things, so... Are you serious? What the hell is wrong with you? Go get it back right now! He saved up years to buy me that ring. You realize that? What is your problem? And the watch. How is his favorite watch? But he's dead now. I don't see what the problem is. And you're single now, so who cares? He's gone now, so we gotta move on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what's the point of keeping something if nobody's gonna use it, right? You know I'm right. And I'm sure this is what he would want. Shut the hell up! You're insane! You're going to hell for this. Screw you. I'm done with you. You're dead to me. I want nothing to do with you anymore. Why are you so mad? Look, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't think you'd make such a big deal out of it. I guess you really loved him. <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? Huh? Of course I loved him. When Dad died, you cried for days. Well, yeah, but I was just worried about money, that's all. He was supposed to take care of me. Never thought he'd die before me. What? So you were worried about yourself? I thought you were crying because you were sad. I was, but once you're dead, there's nothing you could do about it, so... Might as well move on, right? <laughs> you're unbelievable. You don't have to understand, dear. We all process grief differently, so... Anyways, let me help you with the funeral arrangements. It's the least I can do after all the financial help you gave me. Just tell me what to do. Screw you! And don't come to the funeral! You're not welcomed. If you show up, I'm gonna lose it. Don't even think about it. Stay away! And the wedding rings? You're getting them back for me. No matter what it takes. What the hell, Mom? I told you not to come. Oh, come on. My daughter's husband died. I just wanted to pay my respects. Why did you have to kick me out? You embarrassed me in front of everyone. Pay your respects? You gotta be kidding me. You probably came for the obituary gifts. You got some nerve showing up like that. You know that? Thank goodness my sister-in-law noticed you, you thief. Stop calling me that! Look, I had no choice, okay? I'm still in debt! I needed the money! And I'm family! I'm entitled to some of that money! No, I don't think so. I'm using the money we got from our guests for my husband, not you. You're not getting a dime. Your husband was a kind man. If he was alive, he'd definitely help me out. Why can't you be more like him, huh? Some daughter you are. You should be ashamed of yourself. Seriously? Well, I'm embarrassed that you're my mother. Seriously. All you care about is yourself. You make me sick. How dare you talk to me like that? I raised you all these years. Apologize. You don't get to talk to me like that. Where did I go wrong with you? You should be ashamed. You barely did anything for me. Dad did everything around the house. All you ever did was leech off of us. You're pathetic. You didn't raise me. Dad did, and you know it. What is your problem? Why are you so angry with me? Is it because I sold your ring? Is that it? If it was so important to you, why didn't you keep it on you at all times? We stopped wearing it when he got cancer. He lost a lot of weight, so the ring didn't fit it anymore. That's why. We kept it in our bedroom, so we wouldn't lose it. That ring meant a lot to me. Oh well, it's gone now, so just forget about it. Move on! 
old memories aren't worth anything, so... Memories are all I got now. And the rings? I got them back. Huh? I went around the city looking for pawn shops. They weren't that many, so it wasn't that hard. And when I told them what happened, they let me buy it back. What? You paid them? Seriously? Are you dumb? What a waste of money. What is wrong with you? I told you. That ring meant a lot to me. That's why. You want to understand. All you care about is yourself, so... And it wasn't a waste of money. Yes, it is. You should have given me that money instead. I only stole from you because you stopped lending me money. You know that? And whatever. In a way, I'm glad you stole from me. Huh? Why? Because now, I can press charges against you for theft. I'm going to the police. Police? Stop joking around. I'm your mother. I have no mother. Screw you. You're dead to me. You can burn in hell for all I care. Anna, hold on. Look, I apologize, okay? I'm sorry. Let's just leave the cops out of this. We can talk about this. I'll pay you back, I promise. I'll do anything you tell me to. Anything you want, honey. Anything, huh? Okay, then. Go kill yourself and burn in hell. If you can't do that, then you got no choice. You're going to jail. Once you're behind bars, hmm, I'll feel a little better. Stop kidding around. I can't get arrested. If I have a criminal record, how will I get a job? And what if the neighbors find out about this? I have a lot of friends. What would they think of me? So what? I don't care about any of that. All you ever did was leech off of me. And when my husband died, you tried to take advantage of it. Then you stole my wedding ring and sold it off. Why should I help you, huh? After all the things you did to me. But I'm the only family you got left now. I'm your mother. I don't have a mother. She's dead. What? You heard me. You're dead to me now. I'm through with you. Once someone's dead, there's nothing you can do about it, right? You said it yourself. You're just a stranger to me now. You can do whatever you want now. Just leave me out of it. But, uh, I'm still gonna sue you for the damages. Sue me? Uh, yeah, you stole from me, remember? The money I had to pay the pawn shop to get it back? And for my pain and suffering. You'll hear from my lawyer soon. Anna, you can't just leave me like this. Not my problem. You're on your own now. And you got lots of friends, right? Ask them for help. Oh, come on, please. You're the only one that can help me. Please help me. Please, I need you. I'm your mother. Screw you. And again, I don't have a mother. Anna, stop saying that. You're really not gonna help me? No. How many times do I have to tell you? You're not my family anymore. You're dead to me. Go to hell. <laughs> A few weeks later, she got arrested for theft. But it was her first offense, so she didn't get any prison time. But... I hired a good lawyer and sued her for the damages. She didn't have much cash, but she had a lot of jewelry and designer bags. She had to sell it all off to pay me back. Why didn't she just sell her own stuff if she needed the money? She was unbelievable. And now, she was on her own. And she was still up to her neck in debt. A few months later, she filed for bankruptcy. They took everything from her. She had nothing now. She tried to borrow some money from her relatives after that. But everyone knew about what she did. So nobody said yes. So she went to her friends, but... They all knew about what she did. So nobody was willing to help her. She was all alone now. She had nowhere to go. Not sure what happened to her after that, but... Not my problem. She can rot in hell for all I care. As for me, I was slowly getting my life back on track. Losing my husband was really hard on me. I thought about giving up many times, but... I was never the type to give up. And my relatives were really supportive. They all helped me to get through this. And the lawyer that took my case, 
He was a good friend of my husband. And my friends were there for me too. I had a lot of people looking out for me. And for that, I was grateful. Anyways, I'm just glad she's out of my life. Time to move on. How are the test results? All clear this month too. That's incredible. So glad to hear that you're all okay. Now I can go over there without any worries. I was seriously scared and hopeless when they found the cancer, but I'm so glad that I didn't give up and just quit. Thank you for looking up a lot of hospitals and treatments for me to try out. You really saved me there. Oh, come on. That was the least I could do. You did most of the fighting. I couldn't be by your side unless there was some kind of big thing going on like surgery. You know, like during your tough treatments. It was all because of your hard work and effort. I mean, you were away for business and you came back time and time again when I thought that it would be impossible, right? I was seriously happy when I saw you. I'm going to support you as much as I can to return how much you supported me, okay? Thank you so much. From now on, let's be sure to support each other as a family. I want to hurry up and see Cody too, huh? Hey, what about me? <laughs> LOL. Of course I want to see you. That's a given. <laughs> All right. I'll be waiting for you, okay? Make sure you enjoy your life in Japan, okay? Take your time and enjoy life there while you can. Be sure to watch your health and don't push yourself too hard, okay? Aye, aye, Captain. Mom, where are you now? I was going to pick up Justin, so I stopped by the house, but then no one was home, so... If you're out right now, do you want me to come pick you up and give you a ride? Mom? Did something happen? Hello? Oh, hey, Miss Susan. Sorry to tell you this after you came out all this way, but... Cody is going to be my child from now on. You make sure to enjoy the rest of your life, okay? Face your demons and whatnot. What? I'm not sure I understand. Like I said, Cody is going to be taken into our house as our child. So from now on, please stop thinking that he's your child. Um, I'm not sure I really understand what you're saying. What is going on? Why are you suddenly being like this? Well, they already told you how little life you have left, right? You had the surgery, but they don't know if you'll live five more years or not, right? I mean, you're not wrong, but... But the important thing is that I didn't have any metastasis, so if nothing else happens or crops up, I can live a long and fulfilling life. How could you say that after the doctor literally told you you barely have any time left? Just because you stay positive doesn't mean that the disease is just going to magically disappear, lol. Or maybe you're just not able to face the reality, huh? I'm not running from reality. I am facing my reality. It is true that the cancer is still in remission. And even if it shows up again, I will make sure to face it down again and go to treatment. I don't really care about your body and health, to be honest, LMAO. I'm not going to give you Cody back. I think I said this earlier, but I don't understand what you're saying. Calm down and think about it for a second. It's pretty miserable having the memory of a mother who can only live for a few more years, right? He's only two years old. If he stays away from you now, he will have no recollection at all of who you are. If you die, we're going to end up taking care of Cody anyway. Honestly, I'd rather just get started taking care of him now than later, you know. It doesn't matter anyway because it's not like you can take care of him until you're legal. That's a little bit rude, don't you think? You don't have to say it like that. It's not like it's been decided that I'm going to die. Is that really that rude? I think I'm just saying the most common and logical thing for him and everyone else involved. Tell me you don't understand it all. Right? Justin is away overseas for work. You're a ticking time bomb with that broken and diseased body of yours. I don't want a woman like that to be taking care of the important heir to our family. You do understand, right? I'm going to raise my son. I promise I won't be causing any more problems with you, Mom. I really don't care about anything else right now. Just give me Cody back. Oh, come on. Stop acting like I kidnapped him or something. Look, it's not like I'm being mean to you or anything, okay? I'm just glad that you gave birth to a boy. I'm thankful for it even. But Justin and Cody both have bright futures ahead of them. You can't really say the same thing about yourself, can you? 
I'm moving ahead of schedule to plan for the future. Do you understand? Besides, I already have a new woman chosen to take care of him and act as a mother. Huh? What are you talking about, a woman chosen to be his new mother? I meant exactly what I said. Cody's new mother has been picked. You remember Justin's childhood friend, right? Mary? She's going to be his new mother. She's healthy, kind, and I'm sure she would be a great mother to Cody if I asked. Truth be told, I had always hoped that Jessica would marry into the family, ever since they were young. And then Justin goes and chooses you. Whatever. That's already in the past, so I can't complain now, lol. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I'm done with you. Your job is complete. Just forget about your child and enjoy the rest of your life that's left. Okay? What do you mean my job is complete? That's how you felt this whole time? That's what you really think? <laughs> I mean, it's not my fault you don't seem to really understand what's going on. I'm still being a little too kind if I'm honest, lol. It's tough talking to someone who doesn't want to listen. Like talking to a brick wall. What are you talking about, Mom, to Cody? What the hell is she thinking? She said that she's not going to give him to you anymore, right? Yeah, exactly! She told me that she was going to raise Cody as her own to be the family heir. I don't know what to do, Justin! I just called her, but she won't answer her phone. I'm so sorry, Susan. Oh, wait. Hang on a sec. Huh? Figured it out. Huh? Where Cody's being kept. Oh. He's at Mary's house. That's the lady that Mom was saying would be your new wife and Cody's new mom. I don't understand what's going through her head right now. Mary's even married. How is she going to possibly marry me and take care of another person's child? What? Are you serious? Yeah, I think Mom knows that too. Or at least she should know. Mary even has a kid that's as old as Cody. I really think something is wrong with my mom's head. <laughs> she apparently showed up at Mary's house all of a sudden and asked if she could take care of Cody for a while and took off somewhere. Anyway, Cody is safe and sound at Mary's house. And he should be safe while he's there. I'm going to talk to Mary now and explain exactly what's going on. I'm sorry, but can you talk to Mary directly after this and going forward? I'm still not in Japan, so... Of course. Leave it to me. I'm going to pick up Cody real quick, so don't worry, okay? Hey, Miss Susan. Were you able to sort out your feelings and get everything in order for your passing? I'm really hoping you've already signed the divorce papers that I mailed to your house a few weeks ago. Oh. Hey, Mom. Good morning. Good morning? What are you talking about? It's nighttime. Have you finally lost your mind, lol? You really should start sleep talking while you're, you know, asleep, lol. Oh, I'm sorry about that, lol. I forgot the whole time difference thing. What? Of course it's nighttime right now. You really must be sleep talking. I'm sure you're just enjoying your time all alone with no kids, right? You're seriously the least qualified mother I know. I don't really care what you think at all, but can you please not contact me anymore from now on? I have no intention of leaving behind my kids or getting a divorce. What are you talking about, LOL? Cody is over here, you understand? You have a lot of balls coming at me like that. We actually both moved overseas already. Cody is right next to me at the moment. We're all having breakfast as a family right now. Huh? Wait, hang on. What are you talking about as a family? Cody is over here! No, he's not. I actually picked up Cody from Mary a while ago. What? Why? How? Just yesterday, Mary had told me that Cody is having a great time at her house. Oh, she was just pretending the whole thing to make sure that we were all able to get out of Japan as a family. It was so that you wouldn't cause more of a fuss. We had to pretend to have custody of Cody. And while you weren't paying attention, we left the country. That's a lie! I don't believe any of your lies! How would Mary be in contact with you anyway? You're a terrible liar, Miss Susan! Um, just so you know, Justin and Mary are close childhood friends, so it wouldn't be that difficult for the two to get into contact with each other. Mary had contacted Justin because she suddenly had Cody thrown into her house. Justin is overseas, so I was talking to Mary directly and making all of our arrangements. She told me all about how you suddenly showed up and left a child at her house with no explanation at all. She really seemed to be confused and scared about the whole thing. 
There is no way that Mary would ever betray me. She's always been kind and liked me. She's not a smart ass like you and is a really good kid. Unlike you. I think she helped me because she's a really good person. She even helped us get to Justin without any problems too. You realize that Mary is married and has a kid too, right? I know you were talking about making the two get married, but they were both in strong denial about the whole thing, LOL. I don't understand what was going through your brain when you thought all of this up, LMAO. You're still lying. I can tell you no. She's always liked Justin, ever since they were little. So if I make the suggestion that the two get married, I'm sure she'll get a divorce and remarry Justin. Wow. You've really got it all figured out, huh? I, I don't really care anymore, to be honest. No one cares about what you're thinking, LOL. We're all going to cut ties with you as a family. Both Justin and I are going to get new phones and new contact information. We don't plan on sharing our address with you or our new address when we move back to Japan. Please enjoy the rest of your life all alone, okay? You little... You should have let cancer do its job. I really hope and pray that the cancer comes back and finishes you off. Oh, I do need to thank you for one thing, though. Thank you for taking care of Cody while I was in the hospital. I really do want to thank you for that, and that alone. Hmm. <laughs> that kind of thing will never happen to you again, though. Because you have accomplished your job, and you're used up, lol. Apparently, she couldn't believe what I was saying at all. So she decided that she would check herself and went to Mary's home. She saw her over the ring and pretended to not be home. Mary also blocked her from all her contacts. However, she still couldn't give up after that. While Mary was out shopping with her son, she kidnapped Mary's son. Apparently, my mother-in-law was still under the impression that Cody was at Mary's house and she mistook Mary's son to be Cody. Mary called the police immediately and she was arrested and taken away. Mary's son was, of course, returned to Mary in one piece. The whole thing kicked off because of the Cody incident, so even though it was her first time ever getting arrested, she was still sentenced to time in prison because of how criminal she was. Apparently, she finally started to realize the wrongdoing she had committed after she was arrested and in prison, but it doesn't have anything to do with us since we cut ties with her. The police contacted Justin, but Justin said that he wants nothing to do with her at all. Apparently, she never really liked me to begin with. She wanted to use my cancer as an excuse to chase me out of the household. However, it seems like she really shot herself in the foot in the end. I'm not used to living overseas, and everything is new. But when I got my routine checkup, everything seemed normal and I was in the clear. Nowadays, we all live together happily as a family. I plan to outlive my mother-in-law for sure. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.